couple of things uh, we're going to be looking at scripture today. How many think it's a good thing that when you go to church, you pay attention to scripture? <laughs> that's important. Yeah, that's a good thing. I don't know if you notice, sometimes we, we just get so used to surroundings, we don't really notice. Anytime you come into the auditorium, there's actually two book racks on, on either door entrance, and uh, there's Bibles available in case you didn't bring one with you. And then uh, we also encourage people to be able to download scriptures onto your smart device. Uh, how many have done that? Like you have a, that's fantastic. So when we talk from God's word and we read scriptures, obviously we try to make it as convenient as possible by putting scriptures up on the screen. But I think it's always good to have a Bible or a smart device because you can highlight a, a verse of scripture or you can underline it or there's lots of things that you can do so that that becomes a reference point for other things you will think about and decide about in your future. And then I also recommend, uh, in fact, I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the message. You can actually start a note in your phone or you can carry around an analog journal for those of you who, who think this is a better way to do things. Sometimes um, God will whisper things to your heart. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm actually not capable of remembering those things better than other conversations that I have. I can forget. And so I try to capture them as best I can. So what I'd like you to do is if you have a Bible, uh, just grab it. We're going to be in Acts chapter 2 in just uh, a couple of minutes. And, uh, and, and we're going to spend a few weeks talking about the Holy Spirit and, uh, and, and what does a spirit lo life look like and how does that deepen and enrich our experience with God. And, and when I say we're going to do that, I know that there are some people who are automatically interested, like they want to know more about this. And I also know that there are some people who are apprehensive. So why would we want to actually take time to explore who the Holy Spirit is and what he does. And, and I think that there are basic three things I would like to focus your attention on. One is, is that there are some people who feel like there's something wrong with them. Um, something is, is not right, it's not working. When they hear other people describe their spiritual life or their spiritual journey, uh, and they start comparing their experience with theirs, it feels like it's lacking. And, and then they start to wonder, maybe God doesn't trust them with experiences like that, or. And so, and so they just become concerned. So some people will just feel like there's something wrong with them. Secondly, there are some people who feel apprehensive because of something that they've seen. Uh, uh, sometimes someone will do something and then they'll blame God for it. Has anybody ever seen that? Yeah, has anybody ever done that? <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe a spiritual gift was released in a less than gracious way. Maybe you felt pressure uh, to experience something while other people were encouraging or watching. Maybe you've watched people release a spiritual gift and you, sit, you think to yourself, I don't have that kind of personality. And you assume that spiritual gifts are connected to the dynamism of a personality. And, uh, or maybe you've even seen someone do something that uh, what they said and how they said it was offensive to you. And you've just kind of backed away from wanting anything to do with anything like that. And then third, I think there are some people who feel like something's missing in their life. It feels as though to them like uh, their faith is information they have to remember, rules they have to keep, rituals that you engage in, uh, requirements that you uphold. And uh, that will get old after a while. I mean, there's a part of us that kind of likes uh, tradition and rituals and those things. And if you're a good rule keeper, you really like rules. And, uh, but there'll come a point in everyone's life where they'll just ask, is that all there is? Uh, maybe you read a scripture and you don't feel like you're gaining any insight from it. Or maybe you pray and you don't feel like you have any confidence that it's being heard or that it will be answered. Maybe you actually try to serve or help in some way and you don't have any sense of satisfaction or fulfillment. And you wonder if somehow you're disqualified. Like maybe I'm not good enough for God to grant these other things to. So if any of those things are true about you, the thing I would want you to know is you're actually not alone. 
There's a lot of people who struggle with this kind of thing. And so it's why I want us to go to Scripture. Our, our greatest and most reliable and useful source of information about the Holy Spirit is not online. It's in God's Word. I know there are lots of people who get a lot of hits and a lot of likes, and we can assume that if they've got so many people who are watching and so many people who are liking, that they must be right. But I think we're always wise to go back to God's Word and see what God's Word actually has to say on a topic. What if some of our ideas about the Holy Spirit were actually incomplete or inadequate? Like, wouldn't you want those blanks to be filled in so you have a better understanding of the Holy Spirit's role in our world and in our lives? Uh, the, the day we're going to take a, a snapshot of today is, is actually the day that the church was launched. Jesus had resurrected and, uh, and uh, he had uh, ascended to heaven and the disciples were told to go and to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And uh, so on that day, the Holy Spirit came. There were some remarkable things that occurred to the 120 that were gathered. And then Peter stood and he preached a message. And we're going to take just a, a couple of verses out of his message. It's in Acts, the second chapter, beginning in verse 36. This is what Peter is saying. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what must we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit the promise is for you, your children, and for all who are afar off. He's saying it's, it's a geographical promise and it's a generational promise. It doesn't matter how far away you are from that location or how many years you are removed from it. This promise is for you to all whom the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, I love that. Peter was a person of many words. How many just love it when the message goes long? <laughs> yeah, and, and it didn't even make scripture. Like they just said, and he kept talking, okay? With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. I want to talk about two kinds of invitations today. And the first is that God invites us into his life. He wants to think about it. He invites us into his life. In fact, Peter's doing what Jesus told him to do. Invite others into life with God. That this isn't a sectarian and special elite community that separate themselves from all the others who don't measure up or don't don't meet the quotas or the, the, the standards uh, that God demands. The invitation is kind of reckless. It's, it's to anyone. And we're invited to receive forgiveness. And if you've ever experienced genuine forgiveness, you know how freeing that absolutely is. And we're invited to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're invited into an intimate relationship with God, not just to know information about him, but to actually know him. And these are not rights that we demand. It's a gift. It's an invitation that God offers. The response that he's calling us to is not just to feel bad. I don't know what your experience in church world has been. The kind of church world I grew up in the higher the level of conviction in the message, we just thought that was more anointed and really. And so if you really just slash someone to pieces, they would come up to you afterwards and they would say, oh, that was a good message, Pastor. You, you, really, you really cut me up today. You really stepped on my toes today. As though that God's goal is just to make you feel really bad. That's how you know 
that you're turning a corner is how bad you feel about yourself in your life. We are given an invitation to repent, but what does that actually mean? And what I will tell you is, is that there are lots of people who will say, that just means change your behavior. Say you're sorry. If you do that, you've repented. I will tell you that there are people who've said they were sorry and changed their behavior, but they didn't repent. There's something else going on in repentance. And a lot of people see repentance as a very negative thing, almost as some kind of act of humiliation. And that's not what repentance is. God hasn't called us to some kind of self-loathing. That's not what repentance is about. He's inviting us to see him and our world the way he sees. That's at the crux of repentance. There's a way God interacts with humanity. There's a way that God reveals truth. There's a way that God demonstrates grace and generosity. There's a way that the kingdom of God's word. God is not just asking us to submit to a set of rules. He's inviting us to see what he sees and the way that he sees it and then respond accordingly. I know it doesn't sound like a huge difference, but it's amazing what a difference that makes. If we only focus on behavior modification, you will change your behavior for a while. But under enough pressure, you will default back to the way things were before. Because technically, you still see the world the way you saw it before. You're just hoping that your new behavior will count for something. So how does God want us to see God's goal for your life is not just compliance. God's goal for your life is transformation. And there's a huge difference between those two words. So the Holy Spirit is actually the way God is with us today. The Holy Spirit is the way that God is with us right here, right now, today. So I want us to think about the Holy Spirit. And the first thing I want you to know about the Holy Spirit is he is a real person. He's not an impersonal force. Some people see the Holy Spirit as a force that you tap into so you can, can access the energy and the power you need to carry out your visions, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, all of those things. Some people see as, as just a way I can tap into that energy and then I will have more energy and my life will be more of what I want it to be. That's not what the Holy Spirit is. Some people see the Holy Spirit as a force that just gives you a thrill. It's all about a feeling. And so I just, I, I just, I want, I want to have that feeling of the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong. There are feelings when you are connected with the Holy Spirit, but to treat the Holy Spirit as just a way to feel more excited or more energized, that's basically treating the Holy Spirit the same way people treat and think about recreational drug use. There are people who see the Holy Spirit as nothing more than a force by which when I do this in this way, then I get this feeling. If you were to act that way with your friends, how long would the friendship last? Last. The only reason that you're my friend is because when I say these words or I tell you what I want, then you make me feel the way I want you to feel. There's a lot of marriages that don't survive because of that reason. You make it the other person's responsibility for you to feel a certain way. People who think about the Holy Spirit in an impersonal way, as an impersonal force, tend to do things and say things that are disrespectful of others. They are more likely to try to manipulate people to a specific outcome and to an effect. And it's not who the Holy Spirit is, and it's not how the Holy Spirit works. Now, there are thrilling moments when you interact with the Holy Spirit. But that's not all there is to our interaction with the Holy Spirit, just like it's not all there is in your interaction with friends. If, if you went to your friend and you said, the only reason you're in my life is so I can 
feel a certain way, that friendship isn't going to last very long. And by the way, there are some people, if, if they go into an environment where the, the service isn't structured and ordered in a way that they get that feeling, do you know what they'll say? You are quenching the spirit. I didn't get the feeling I want. The only reason that could be true is you must be quenching the spirit. If you make feelings the goal, you will ruin the relationship. The Holy Spirit is the way God is with us today. Now, the whole, it is true. Scriptures often refer to the Holy Spirit as things like this. The Holy Spirit is like a dove. The Holy Spirit is like a fire. The Holy Spirit is like wind. The Holy Spirit is like water. All of those things are true, but it's not saying the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force. It's using something we understand to help us understand the purpose and the nature of the Holy Spirit. We do this with people, by the way. We might describe a passionate person as being on fire. Wow, they were on fire today. Were they actually on fire? No. Okay. Um, someone might come along and they were super helpful to you and, and you might go up to them and you say, you were such a gift today. Are, are you saying that, that that's all they are is just a gift? No, we understand that we're, we're using something we already understand to describe the influence or the effect that someone is having in our lives. Treating the Holy Spirit as an impersonal force not only will tend to mistreat other people, but it will tend to, for us to focus more only on ourselves. What can the Holy Spirit do for me? What does the Holy Spirit, what can I make the Holy Spirit do on my behalf? And, and then all he becomes is a force we tap into. That is not how the, whole, the scriptures reveal or talk about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a real person and the Holy Spirit is a real gift. Once again, this is not an intent to depersonalize the Holy Spirit. Just like you would say someone else was a gift to you, when a gift to your organization because of the way they helped, we can talk that way about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us into a deeper walk with God, a deeper sense of God's presence, a deeper life with our friends, a deeper uh, capacity to share our faith with other people and to share God's grace with other people, to be sure the Holy Spirit can coach us towards being a better person and coach us towards interacting with others in a better way. But that's not all the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit actually empowers us giving us the capacity to do something we actually are not able to do on our own. It's beyond our ability. These are, there are things we cannot do without him. And so we're called to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit, to have an encounter with God, which is far more than just a feeling. A feeling will only last so long. How many know there's a famous fast food restaurant that provides something for children called a happy meal? Yes? How many know once you give your child that meal, they're just happy for the rest of their life? Wouldn't that be great? Sometimes they're not happy on their last swallow. So what are we, what are we talking about? I'm... Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying there are no feelings involved with the Holy Spirit. But if that's all the Holy Spirit is to you, then there's a lot of things you will never learn that you will never grow in. You know, an encounter with God will just will do more. There may be a feeling a, a, a associated, but an encounter with God will actually change you. An encounter with God changes what you see and how you see it. If all you can see is bad things, you're going to live in a lot of fear. If you can start to see some of the potential and possibility, you're going to live with more faith. If you can see God's faithfulness, you're going to experience a lot more comfort and a lot more confidence. If you can experience God's generosity, you're going to live with a lot more freedom. So this is what God 
Don't pursue faith and comfort and confidence and freedom. Pursue God. Pursue God. That's the focus. You can take a course and improve your confidence, but that's not the same thing as the kind of transformation that can happen when you have an encounter with God. Does anybody here uh, buy gifts for anyone? Yeah. And uh, so the question is, what kind of gift buyer are you? Are you the person who spends hours trying to find just the right gift? Like if, if someone's birthday is coming up months in advance, like what is this, May? Some of you are already halfway done with your Christmas shopping. And it's, it's just wrong. <laughs> I don't understand that. And, the, and, the, and then there are other people, you know, they, they got to find that perfect gift and they'll, they'll research and, and they'll do all kinds of stuff just to find. By the way, you, you can do this online, you know. Uh, if you wanted to buy a gift for a 50-year-old dad, just say, what are good gifts for 50-year-old dads? And, and, and the search engines of the internet will have some recommendations. Not all of them are good, but there will be recommendations. And then there are other people, the way that they buy gifts is the first thing that they look at. That'll do. <laughs> Put a bow on it. We don't even wrap them up anymore. We stuff them in bags and throw some Kleenex on top and hand them off. <laughs> yeah. So many of you are wondering how I buy gifts. And uh, uh, I actually, I'm annoying to shopping people who want to have a conversation with me. I go into a place and I move through it with, with uh, the, the kind of speed that it almost looks like a walking race. And I'm just looking, really, and, and, and sometimes a gift will jump out at me. And I go, oh, that's good. And then I'll think of the person, and, and that's the gift that I'll buy. In our family, uh, Sue has been primarily responsible for gift buying for other family members and extended family members and stuff like that. And one year, uh, uh, she wanted me to help. And I can't tell you how excited I was about that opportunity. I, I, just, <laughs> I just got down on my knees and thanked God that finally I was being brought into a conversation that I always hoped and wished that I would be a part of. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, we went into, and, and I'm, I'm moving, like I'm going. And, and she's, what are you doing? I said, I'm shopping. And I went through, and, and I stopped, and I said, that would be perfect for, and it and, and actually was. It was a good gift for them. And then, poof, we took off again. And, 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 she's, and I said, oh, that would be great for, and, I, and, and she, she said, yeah, that, that would actually be good. And, and 15 minutes later, our Christmas list was done. And don't get me wrong, we were only buying for five people, but our Christmas list, no, I'm kidding. Our Christmas list was done. And then, and then, see, this is the problem with doing something well. <laughs> people expect you to do it again. The Holy Spirit is a gift. And, and here's the thing. Why do we buy gifts? Do we buy gifts because we love someone or we buy gifts because they expect it? And the truth for us is it's, it's usually both. But the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. The Holy Spirit is not a reward for achieving certain things. He's a gift given by our Heavenly Father. First John, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. We know it. And we rely on it. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. God is motivated by love always, every time. No exceptions. Scripture did not say God has love. It says God is love. Every gift of God motivated by love. Every action of God motivated by love. He cannot change his nature. It's who he is. Wouldn't it be great if everything we did was motivated by love? 
This is actually the key to unlocking our capacity to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to release gifts in our world today. We can have a lot of inadequate reasons for wanting spiritual gifts to be present or to be manifest. Sometimes we just want other people to know we are right. The Holy Spirit is moving in this place. That makes us right. Sometimes we just want to be elevated a little bit in our status so people will know we take our faith spiritually. But all of those can be inadequate. It's not about being right and it's not about being significant. It's about loving God and loving people. In fact, when you read through 1 Corinthians 12, which is where Paul is actually introducing the idea of spiritual gifts and how they function, he goes through all of chapter 12 and talks about them. And when he gets to the end, he says, it's good thing to desire powerful spiritual gifts, but there is a more excellent way. And then thir chapter 13 is about love. That often what we're trying to do is to find a way to be more usable for a spiritual gift. And the truth is, the more you love God and the more you love others, the more likely you are to be used by God with a spiritual gift. If you want to experience more spiritual gifts, focus on loving others better. That's what scripture has to say. And it's a very powerful thing. The more we love one another, the more the Holy Spirit will have the opportunity and the freedom to do some amazing things. I want to ask the worship team to come out. Uh, we can invite the Holy Spirit into our day. See? God invites us into his life. We can invite him into ours. The truth is that we're not able to live the Christian life on our own, but we can invite the Holy Spirit to help us. We can help we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us speak the truth in love. We can ask the Holy Spirit to help us act with integrity. We can ask the Holy Spirit to help us do a task in a way that's actually a blessing and a benefit, and it's done really well. We can ask the Holy Spirit, what steps should I take? What direction should I be aiming towards? We can ask the Holy Spirit for help in forgiving someone. Because if you've ever had to really forgive someone of a horrible thing, you figure out pretty quickly you can't do it on your own. The Holy Spirit is the way we experience God today. Once you've invited him in, what I would encourage you to do is to start giving attention so this is the part I, I wanted to encourage you. Open a note in your smart device. Start carrying around a little pocket journal. And start noticing when the Holy Spirit is assisting you, is attending to you, is helping you serve someone else. Notice when Fear that it seems to be rising at a level that could be incapacitating all of a sudden begins to settle back down. Notice when you're faced with an another piece of disappointing news that makes the future far less likely that you hoped for than you thought could ever be. And then all of a sudden, for, for some unknown reason, you just think, but maybe, maybe this isn't the final thing. Maybe this is the next thing. And you find yourself having hope. It's, it's good to ask what God wants you to do. It's also good to notice what God is doing right now because he's at work. The Holy Spirit didn't take a day off. He's doing something in your life right now. And all we have to do is notice. Let's bow our heads. Father, uh, we do struggle. We get kind of self-focused, and honestly, we are tempted to want to tap into your strength and your power for our purposes. Would you help us today to come to the Holy Spirit as a person 
who is a gift from you because you love us and to begin to notice all the ways he is at work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together.